So you might be disappointed to hear that some of the treasure hunting shows like Storage Wars aren't reality. They're scripted and staged and yes, totally fake. So don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. But without further ado, let's begin with number 10. Number 10, Dave Hester Lawsuit. Storage Wars is another reality show that allegedly plays loose with the definition of the word reality. Cast member Dave Hester approached producers with concerns over the show's authenticity numerous times. In fact, he filed a lawsuit against A&E and Original Productions over these concerns in 2012. Hester's suspicions arose because whenever he won a bid, producers would draw his attention to certain boxes or unload the storage unit so he could discover certain items. Like the time he found a pile of old newspapers which announced Elvis Presley's death, or when he found a car underneath a pile of trash a BMW mini car to be exact. Number 9. Fake Auctions Before the stars of Storage Wars can find a treasure among the cardboard and Rubbermaid, there must first be an auction. And the auction has to be fun and exciting, or viewers will just go, forget this, I'm gonna go watch Better Call Saul. Dave Fester's complaint said A&E will often fake an auction themselves. Quote, While on location filming an auction, defendants also film footage of the cast members in the public bidding when no actual auction is taking place in order to make it appear that any of the cast members are bidding at any given auction, whether or not he or she is actually bidding on that given unit. Number 8. Everything is scripted so, Thom Beers admitted to kind of sort of not being totally honest about what items were actually found in which storage lockers. Guess what? In that same National Geographic panel, he also admitted to kind of sort of scripting some of the interviews with cast members. It was excused as a substitute for narration, because no one likes to listen to these deadpan off-camera narrators. Quote, I have to admit, there's some rating involved, Beers said. Quote, we do it on Storage Wars, we do it on America's Lost Treasures, I'm so tired of narration driving story. So that basically means that about half of what the stars say is a given line, according to Beers. So the stars can tell their own stories, kind of. Number 7. Staging Lockers to Fit the Narrative Anyone who has ever owned a storage unit can tell you what a normal storage unit actually looks like. It's full of spiders, everything is covered in dust, the boxes have all been haphazardly piled because it's really just a bunch of junk that you don't want to deal with right now and that a $49 a month storage fee seems worth in comparison to losing a weekend to decluttering when you could be half asleep on your couch watching Storage Wars instead. Anyway, that's what most storage units look like on the inside, but if you pay attention to the show, neatly arranged storage units tend to have elevated chances of containing valuable items. And if we believe that the storage units are sealed, it seems logical that they're also sealed staged to make them fit the narrative. Number 6. Appraisers are not really appraisers Okay, so let's sum up what we know so far. The auctions aren't always auctions, the items found in the storage lockers aren't always found in the storage lockers, and the appraisers who actually decide the value of the items that were not found in the storage lockers aren't actually appraisers and therefore probably don't know what they're talking about. Also, the Storage Wars stars say lines fed to them by producers, and the whole thing is tainted by network cash. Number 5. Fakery is free speech so what actually happened when all the Storage Wars legal drama was over? Well, after the first round, Dave Hester did not emerge triumphant, but it wasn't because the judge decided it was all in the up and up and nothing screwy was going on behind the scenes. In fact, what the judge actually decided is that all the fakery was totally cool because it was expressive, free speech. The judge ultimately decided that Hester wasn't specific enough with his accusations of wrongful termination, so he threw out the case. He also said Hester could refile, assuming that he could figure out how to be more specific. And that's what Hester did in July of 2014. The case was finally settled for an undisclosed amount. Number 4. The Glamour is for Ratings Only it's hard to sell someone if the cast members can't get along with one another or if they're just play acting. And it's even more difficult to tell which lockers are genuine and which were seated. But overall, the show is very, sort of real. The idea of auctioning off storage units isn't a falsity, and it does occur in real life. And it's usually an exciting day for those who attend. It's also wise to bring some cash, since most people don't want to deal with debit or credit cards, and the idea is that you buy what you see and that is it. And if there's anything inside that turns out to be valuable, then so much the better for you. Number 3. The Lockers Are Seated the thrill of buying up storage lockers isn't always as grand as it seems, since they don't always yield up the kind of treasures that people think about. Some lockers do contain genuine finds that people wonder why anyone would have something so valuable and leave it behind, but a lot of them are crapshoots that force the bidders to gamble on what could be in there. For the sake of the show and ratings, however, there are times that certain lockers are seated, meaning that the production crew will actually place valuable items for the cast to find inside. 
Number 2. Stars are fake too. This isn't really the same kind of fake exactly. And really, if you're going to complain about famous people getting plastic surgery, you'd have to implicate pretty much everyone in Hollywood. Hester's lawsuit weirdly called out this particular act of Storage Wars fakery too. Quote, nearly every aspect of the series is faked, even down to the plastic surgery that one of the female cast members underwent in order to create more, quote, feel for the show. Number one, Dave Hester lobbed a whole lot of accusations at Storage Wars. And one of those was that instead of just letting drama unfold, the network would sometimes pay for the lockers that were bid on by less experienced members of the cast, so the playing field would be even. So in other words, the bigger, more established storage locker moguls were using their own money to invest in lockers, while the smaller businesses were depending on A&E to keep them in the game. So, that's it for today's video. What do you think about this video? Drop your opinions in the comments section below, and we do love to read your comments. And don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. Also, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, or you will miss out on some exciting videos. Thanks for watching the video.